Okay, last few months I've done a lot of talking about boxes. I'm kind of sick of talking about boxes. I've enjoyed my time talking about boxes, but I think it's time to do a big project. And to round off this Lord of the Rings themed month, I think it is time for a board. Specifically for this board, I am inspired by what I see in the original Fellowship of the Ring rulebook that came out in 2001. If you want to see my video about that specific box set, paching up there, let's go. But if I can hold your attention for a menial eight hours, let's get started, get this board done. So like with many boards, but unlike my last board, this one is built upon a wooden frame, pine and MDF. Now, when it comes to making boards, I like to wet work, which means the board spends the entire working process and a good time afterwards in an uncured state. It means I can constantly be working and progressing on it without any drying walls. However, it does mean something else. That board is going to be heavy as shit. And to keep everything together while I'm working on it and moving it around and eventually playing on it, structure and strength is everything. Screws, nails, glue, cross braces. This step adds an extra day to the process, but is ultimately worth it for the longevity of the piece. Gorilla Glue, alternating with Trade Strength PVA, are my choices of adhesive, so that it's grabbed initially by the Gorilla Glue, reinforced with the PVA, and it doesn't cost a fortune. Oh. Okay, so we have our base levels down. The next step is to map out what I want the geography of this board to be. I think I'm going to leave the far end closest to you as just kind of undulating flattish planes. Uh, here I'm going to mimic the original fellowship diorama and the board that they play on in that will have water, the river, like that buckleberry fairy looking thing. I'm going to use a couple of tricks that they actually useful terrain tricks that are in that book so we're going to go with that. And at this side we're probably going to have a raised area and I have some MDF ruins that I'm going to fix up and make look a little bit nicer. So ruins, water, trees, maybe path here. We'll carve into a little bit to have a road and we'll see where we go from there. Maybe get a cute signpost and some fences. Who knows? We'll see what happens when I run out of time. Oh, fucking knees. Neat trick for fallen rubble here. Cling film, leftover casting plaster, pour it out, flatten it down. Once it's dry, smash it up. It will match the cliff face and add no weight to the board once it's dry and it costs virtually nothing to make. As always, I'm using my homemade modeling compound. It dries virtually weightless, sets in 15 minutes and allows me to carve into it later without any tools. However, since my ghetto sculptor mold is pretty rough, I'm gonna go over it with a stiff brush just to remove any obvious big bumps or loose paper pulp on the surface that might piss me off later. Mm -hmm. 
Since our board surface extends over the pine framing over and above, we need to add some siding and some trim to it. Easy peasy, just make your rough terrain outline to the match sides, you can build it up later. Slice them up, Gorilla Glue for the grab and screw them in for a final hold. Every time I do a board build, I try and do another process, which, you know, last time I either hadn't thought of or something I didn't have time for. This one, I have, fuck off, afforded myself a little bit more time to spend more time on it. So this time I actually went over all of the ground layers and the ground formations and undulations with a coat of plaster. Like the entire thing just kind of smoothed out, not especially thick, uh, in places it is thicker, where you know there's handprints in the sculptor mold because that does naturally happen every time uh, and this is in a bid to sort of make the terrain more smooth natural green fieldsy so that when everything goes on top you don't have bits of the plaster still sticking out it's going to be painted an earthy color but you still end up with shiny smooth parts sticking out and i'm going to try and avoid that this time uh next step is to take probably the ruins home because now I'm conscious of how little time there is left actually and hopefully tomorrow I can get a layer of paint down on this thing in fact now well, fuck that shit tomorrow I'll get a, uh, a layer of paint down in the morning to get actual colour ground scatter on next week let's go oh fucking knees I picked up these MDF ruins from Chilcon a few weeks ago they were pretty cheap and had a nice amount of detail on them at least for what I needed for this board These guys don't take too long to stick together and I'm finally making the mandatory stockist white dwarf magazines I get forced on me every month useful for adding some protruding bricks onto them. Okay, so we got our top coat of plaster down. What I need to do now is decide on the placement of where these buildings are going to be. I think I'm going to aim to have some sort of asymmetrical strategic advantage to them. Kind of like I did with the kill team board, but well, exactly like I did with the kill team board. So that while there'll be some in the lower down valley, the risen area on the hill will also have some buildings. So if you start on top of the hill, you're probably at an advantage. But I'm very much a casual play with friends kind of guy. Um, and I like the idea that scenarios can be unwinnable but the challenge is kind of fun, so um, it doesn't need to be a, a balanced, symmetrical, tournament safe board. It just needs to be, well for starters, it's probably gonna get played once every six months, so it needs to look fucking nice on a shelf also. Uh, then I think it might be time to get some rocks and scatter down, some big chunky boys, and then a layer of paint down uh, just before we do final top cover. So rock and roll, let's go. If you're wondering what this large grit stuff is, I believe it's terrarium filler from Ikea, but it feels like the larger pieces of cat litter. So cat litter will probably do you all right. I soak this fucking thoroughly with water and isopropyl for that capillary action before laying down a 50-50 mix of water and PVA, which is pretty heavy stuff. Bobby basic pass with brown craft paint means that any surface crap that gets moved around or worn off during play in the future won't be too noticeable. It's just going to look like the mud underneath. Again, adding to the life of the board. The 
next step is to start adding our ground cover, which is the coloured textures from Woodland Scenics uh, and various hardware shop sands. Got a lot of different selections of greens that I'm going to use, but ultimately I'm going to try and make it. Ultimately, I'm going to try and make it lots and lots of different colours that sort of blend and gradient seamlessly with each other. Quite a common air quote mistake I used to make, which was to just have loads of different patches of colour and then just kind of put them together where they join. Uh, but now I use mid greens predominantly to blend the more potent, vibrant stuff with the, the more bleached out yellowy tones. I've got some garden ornamentation like sharp sand mixture stuff. I'm going to dot that around any rocks I've got on the landscape at the corners of roads where it's been moved and cleared. And probably a mixture of sand and tile grout on the roads for a fine dirt effect. There's, there's still a lot to go, um, but we are on to like the final couple of days I think now, so let's crack the fuck on. When it comes to making organic looking ground cover, there's, from my perspective, a lot of things that need to go down, but it's never actually a taxing or difficult process. It's very much about just cobbing a load of layers on top of each other and building it up slowly. I start with the big gauge stuff, rocks, boulders, rubble, tea leaves, coarse sands, twigs, and clump foliage. Then move up to my desaturated base coat of material that's gonna cover the majority of the board before adding spot highlights and blended greens and more saturated colors over the top of that. I go by the philosophy that, you know, mother nature don't give a shit, so why should you? And to clarify, there's no need for defined edges or, you know, that our clever human brains always want to push us toward. Every transition between colors is a bit messy and gradual. Every green has different shades of green in it. Every larger object is cemented into the environment with smaller scatter that moves, you know, moves with the wind and the rain and the elements. Time for our first actual drying wall. I'm soaking the entire board in water and isopropyl to ensure that our thicker PVA mixture of sealant can travel across every surface and reach the bottom of the sky. I'll seal that up with PVA, leave it 24 hours, and then I can progress with another stage. So naturally when we're building a fantasy board like this guy, uh, we need to think about trees. And okay, maybe we don't need to think about trees, but trees are awesome little things you can put on a board, a historic or a fantasy board, uh, and they will add so much more to it, so much more verticality, so much more detail, so much more interest. However, making trees, which is nice trees that look really good, but can also take a bump, are a real pain in the neck to make and ultimately always end up being a project in their own right really so for this video i just bought some or rather i reached out to this video sponsor wayland games to send me some wayland have really upped their game over the last few years offering free shipping on orders over 20 quid offering a 60 day returns policy and really expanding their stock line when i emailed and said i was looking at a solution for some trees they directed me toward the new Woodland Scenics line. And I was like, Woodland Scenics? All right, granddad, I'll give it a go. <laughs> but they sent me some stuff out and, oh man, uh, where did I put them? In very eco-friendly packaging, I'll point out. And uh, yeah, Woodland Scenics aren't playing around these days. For its durability, this is a very nice tree. So I said to them, all right, I quite like this. Send me some of their new kits to make and I'll see what I can do with that. And so they sent these. Did not expect these to be metal armatures. Interesting. And with these guys, you just pose, twist, move around however. Prime it up with a grey. Hit them with a wash. My choices are usually a Thonian camo shade and a little bit of Agrax Earth shade. And a 
cheeky little dry brush. And this mesh stuff that they come with. Just cut that up into some little squares, stretch it out, get some PVA on the armature and you're pretty much good to go. And just wait for them to dry. Heavy duty, solid, gaming friendly trees. So thank you Wayland Games for sending those over and helping to support MS Paint. Whether you're looking for Discount Warhammer, Bolt Action, Malifaux, Legion, Crisis Protocol or damn, even Bushido, head to waylandgames.co.uk and tell them MS Paint sent you. There's no formal way to do that by the way, just verbally announce at checkout MS Paint sent me and they will definitely, they will definitely hear you and that helps me, so. Finishing touches time. Our water is made of clear PVA, which will massively reduce when cured. But with a coat of gloss Mod Podge over the top of this in a week or so, I think this is going to sell us water fairly well. Leopard spotting is something that I really need to work on. Always end up going too weak with the washes. They look pretty popping when they're wet, but after a few days, they really desaturate into virtually nothing and disappear. combo of Vallejo Game Wash Brown and Dry Brush idea that I had didn't, didn't work too well for the wooden parts of the board and I didn't really have time or inclination to start again. So with some leftover tree cover, I threw that on there as ivy and it actually looks really nice. Go me. Once everything is pieced together, I can sit back take it all in and look forward to some adventures in Middle Earth. Once it's finished, you do see some things that you missed, like there's a few foam bricks here and there that are still blue on one side and some uncured white PVA poking through on the scatter that I need to cover up. But these are really minor gripes with my own work. It's amazing to be able to build stuff like this, have some friends over and together we can take our first adventures into Middle Earth. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys, those golden little numbers massively help me out and it lets you know when I've got new stuff out. And of course thank you to all my wonderful patrons, that community has grown so large over the last year and you guys are a wonderful group of people who not only support me, but also support each other as we wander through this weird and wonderful hobby life together. Cheers! I'm out of here.